What's going on everybody? Doc and Slock back again for Halo Wars 2 action and today we're going to be doing uh, we're going to do a series of vids here actually uh, talking through the different leaders. Now that we have most of the cards unlocked um, we want to talk through in-depth deck builds with each leader. Um, understanding everybody has preferences. There are probably people, uh, leaders that you guys really want to use. Uh, so hopefully you can take some of our tips from these deck builds um, and apply them to your game. Again, understanding the basic strategy for the game uh, really is the same. Grab energy, get to the points, uh, be able to build that energy up. Uh, so the first one we're going to actually talk through uh, today uh, is kind of Sloth Shipmaster build. Yes, Shipmaster. Uh, my personal favorite, um, I, I actually started... Uh, with some of the backstory um, in some of the Vidocs and stuff. Uh, I actually really like his backstory. Um, definitely worth checking out some of the extended universe. Um, so I kind of liked him before the beta even started. Um, but I wanted to pick up on uh, on Shipmaster. Um, Doc actually is a little bit uh, more set up for this uh, than myself. He's got a few cards that I don't have, unfortunately. Um, but uh, we wanted to kind of go over this, and when we t talked about doing leader per leader uh we actually started to see how beneficial it was for us to look through and see what are the strengths and weaknesses uh of these decks and of these of these individual leaders um so that's kind of what we wanted to go over today um we're gonna see my deck build um or what my deck build will become uh when i'm lucky enough to actually pull the honor guard yeah uh and as well as the blood fuel locust both yeah. of which doc has uh <laughs> and that keeps me up at night um uh, <laughs> but uh the we start off with the hunters, um, pretty standard. Got to have some some early anti vehicle, um, pound for pound. Uh, probably one of my favorite units early in the game, right? For anybody in the banished, um, just because forty energy is so cheap, uh, and they'll just rip vehicles apart. Obviously, they're going to be red against your uh, your infantry, and they're not even going to be able to touch aircraft. But I think it's worth it um, if you use them correctly in the beginning of the game. Yeah, really a pair of these. Uh, the Assault. I was going to say, a pair of these really <laughs> help me. you out uh, uh, right at the beginning, too. Um, just because a lot of uh, starting armies for all the leaders come uh, with vehicles. Um, and e Again, even a single pair of these really tear those up. Um, the lack of ability to hit air units, like you mentioned, uh, is huge. Uh, so if you see hunters just sitting, <laughs> just sitting on a point, Send an air unit over, and it's going to be able to take them out. Um, and I think that's something some people forget sometimes because they are such a good starting unit uh, for such a low energy cost. Absolutely, the uh, in, and and we'll talk Atriox at another point where he gets uh, he gets the kind of beefed up hunters, um, which are even scarier, but. It's it's important to remember that that the standard hunters are still nothing to, to mess with, especially if you're starting early, uh, and uh, you're running three warthogs. Um, you're gonna want to stay away from those hunters. Uh, the next up, I use the assault elites a lot. Uh, the rush ability is really great. If you're lucky enough to pull your hunters and your assault elites early in the game uh you can obviously see that the assault elites are good against your infantry uh so if you have a mixed bag of vehicle and infantry um those two guys 90 energy you've got two separate units that are going to specialize uh in in the two things you're going up against uh rush is just always fantastic i make a point to when i'm making a deck look and see who do i have this rush and i try to pound that into my head uh because i'm super hesitant to put anybody down that's combat fatigued uh because to me uh i, I just almost kind of feel like i'm wasting that unit especially in a big battle if they turn around and get killed i'm kicking myself uh because i know i i missed out on a lot of damage being dealt and i took half the damage it would take to actually kill me, and I lost that unit. Um, so having the rush ability is awesome. They avoid that combat fatigue. And actually, they can detect, too. So you're running up against another shipmaster uh, with his prowling marauders. Uh, drop your rush elites down, and instantly you can see them. Uh, we've actually employed that technique a couple times. Uh, I know of, uh, we had Kodiaks and Blisterback set up, and I just dropped assault elites down where I knew they had some cloaked units, and then our artillery just tears them up right uh, uh which is really thing, nice the other thing with rush that makes it super beneficial is the fact of if you have a unit or you need to grab that energy they don't suffer from combat fatigue like the ability says so they can pick up energy uh as soon as uh the the pods drop and as soon as they land in whereas other units it'll take them until they get through that fatigue 
uh, in order to pick that energy up. You can actually use these guys to make some heals. Uh, if your opponents are like blowing the cores up and not moving their unit in, and you can get a line of sight, drop these guys in, go grab it, in and out uh, real quick. We mentioned before, nothing wrong with being cheeky. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, use use some of that strategy. If you can take something from right under their noses, absolutely do it. Um, I do like having the engineers. Um, really nice to, to kind of just do a little bit of support. Uh, we talked before in another video about their ability to detect and support, obviously, uh, but they also can heal air units, something that the Nightingale cannot do currently. Uh, so they're really nice. Um, they actually all also, pardon me, uh, have that overshield ability um, that is easy to forget about, um, but it's super helpful to do, uh, especially if you have artillery coming in. Have your your engineer with that group do that overshield, and that's really going to help until you can move to that artillery. Um, so kind of use him as a walk and shield. Uh, the uh, siphon locust is probably something they're going to look at. I think we've talked in another video about that as well. Uh, super long range, a uh, lot of health, may not do a particularly large amount of damage, but it can do it for a really long time because it has such a range right. uh, and you're siphoning health back. Right. Um, and, and that's, I mean, that's just kind of kicking a man while he's down. Huge, huge amount with the blood fuel locust just uh, of health again. So this unit, um, we, we started playing around with it just the other day in another video um, and, and honestly, I was super impressed just by how long it stayed alive. Um, I paired it up with a couple other, I think I had a Wraith uh, and maybe some Hunters. Um, and I kind of sat him a little bit farther back again because the range is so huge. And I mean, just the consistent stream of damage um, to where they couldn't touch it and then having the shield on top of it, like this thing does not die. Um, so I, I do feel like, again, we talked in that other video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, go check it out. Um, but really really i think something that they'll probably nerf in the future at least as far as its actual range um it probably will keep its health because again it is an anti-building unit great for taking down energy cores if they can see them uh, but definitely recommend having this in here specifically for the siphon ability too absolutely the the siphon ability is one of my favorite uh kind of it's it's almost hidden you'll see a lot of icons on units that have these special abilities um the siphon you'll see kind of like this little green swirl around them uh seeing a locust with that green swirl uh gives me nightmares uh, because it's it's super difficult to take out um so it, that's going to be one of the things that we really try to do with shipmaster when i'm playing him uh utilize range and utilize a little bit of stealth and speed uh so that that locust is going to be really effective for that um, especially if you pair him with an engineer, um, kind of floating around, we like to put the locust next to the blister backs that we'll talk about in a minute, um, with an engineer back there. And I mean, the longevity on those units kind of supporting each other and helping each other is insane. It is important uh, to note, uh, your engineer will not heal your shielded units until they start <laughs> to lose actual health. Uh, if they start to lose shield, your engineer just kind of sits there. Um, so just... Make sure you guys understand that. I know uh, that's one thing that I was like at first when I first started pairing guys up like that. I'm like, this guy's taking damage. I see him losing shield. Uh, why isn't being healed? <laughs> Engineers only heal health, uh, not shields. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Yeah, that's that's actually a really good point uh, that I didn't realize until you had brought it up to me some time ago. Um, the next unit, we decided to go with a standard Banshee. Um, we will talk, uh, probably after we get through this, the, this deck, uh, on what we kind of left out and what we decided to go against, um, doing a standard Banshee. It's 60 energy, pretty low energy, uh, going to be able to move quick, uh, which is one of the shipmasters really big areas of focus, uh, and obviously still good against vehicles, uh, but going to be neutral against everything else. Um, so it's still a pretty early game low cost jack of all trades um, which i think is really needed uh in this deck because if you look at the first first couple actual attacking cards they're really focused uh you know the hunters are definitely going to focus on vehicles the assaults elites are definitely going to focus on infantry we kind of need a jack of all trades to throw in there um so that's that's what the banshee's going to cover the prowling reaver is he's kind of the linchpin in my opinion of this deck 
this deck could possibly have a big weakness to air. Um, so the Prowling Reaver with the shield, the cloak, and the detect that hits air units for 90 energy is fantastic. Um, if you use him correctly, this is one of the strongest units um, that you can kind of spit out pretty regularly, uh, and I encourage you to do so. Um, the ability to hit air, we were talking about, you can take out a vulture without even taking any damage right. if the other guy is not paying attention to what's happening. Because uh, the Reaver is very strong, and it's cloaked. Uh, so if the Vulture can't see him, the Vulture's going down unless he gets it out of there. Right. And Vultures move pretty slow, so um, the fact that this guy has the Predatory Leap, which I'll, I don't see a lot of people using, uh, because it doesn't actually yeah. do any damage, but the fact that it can jump uh, kind of kind of a good distance and get into the fight, uh, again, if you know that they don't have a unit that's going to be able to detect it, um, is awesome. This thing tears up any air unit. So we, we, we highlight the vulture just because it's probably the biggest health uh, air unit uh, in the game. Um, but, uh, I mean, Banshees, Sentinels, nothing stands a chance. A couple barrages from this thing, um, and they are going down for sure. Absolutely. The, the, the Reaver's Predatory Leap, like you said, is super underrated. That You're tearing that vulture up, it tries to get away. Leap after it. Don't be afraid to get that Reaver in the battle, especially if it's in the first 90 seconds it's out on the field. It, most things are not even going to see it, much less to be able to attack it. Um, so definitely use it. Spit out Reavers as often as you can. Um, that's my personal recommendation if you're going to use this build. Uh, because we have a decent number of units that can't even touch air and a lot of units that are just not good at at fighting air at all. Um, so definitely use the Reaver to your advantage. Um, shore up your numbers with them. Right. My first ability is Cloaking Field. Uh, when I first started using Shipmaster, I was like, dude, that's dumb. Why? I don't care about cloaking. Like, <laughs> it, it, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can be invisible, but okay. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know. I, I, I was looking more of an offensive point of view, um, but the Shipmaster is an assassin. Um, that, that's that's going to be his kind of style. So I, I keep the cloaking field in. If nothing else, I completely counteract Scarab Assaults and Condor Strikes with a 100 energy card. Um, you can't beat that. Um, they we're, we're all fighting for B. Doc and I have a big army amassed. They drop a Scarab on us. I'm going to hit the Cloaking Field, and the Scarab just sits there. There's a whole army in front of it, and it can't see them, um, which is really, really good. Um, also great for kind of coming into a battle. With Blitz, you can always see what the enemy is doing on the map. There is no kind of fog of war kind of idea. Um, so they can still know you're coming, but that's fine, because if they can't attack you, what are they going to do about it? Um really like the cloaking field a lot. Um, definitely more than I thought I would. Uh, one of the, the, the cards that I can point to and say, this has won the game for me X number of times. Um, also important to note that does affect your friendly, or, uh, pardon me, your allied units. Um, so I have actually cloaked Doc quite a few times um, under those exact circumstances. They drop a condor on him on C while I'm fighting for B. I'm just going to shield him. Or uh, a cloak, and pardon me. Uh, glassing beam is a personal favorite of Doc's. Um, yes. That is specific just to Shipmaster. I, uh, we're starting to level that up, which is super exciting. <laughs> I, I freaking love this card, man. Uh, it, and again, this is kind of uh, overall with the base strategy, as Law said, uh, could have that slight weakness to air. This is your other uh, kind of trump card for that. Um, glassing beam again. Uh, the initial burst when it comes down does a good amount of damage. How long it lasts? actually pretty good uh, allows you the capability to move around the battlefield too while relatively slow faster units like warthogs and stuff can kind of get away from it uh, but slower units like tanks uh, the vulture I, i'm gonna be honest they don't stand a chance if they're getting direct hit from it when it comes down you're not moving out of the way fast enough even if you have the unit selected um, and it does a huge amount of damage it is absolutely awesome um, so highly recommend having this in there 100 um, percent also again just understanding if you if you run up against like Anders or somebody that's using heavy Sentinels, heavy air units, uh, this is kind of your counter card to that. And I guarantee you will shred through regular Assault Sentinels and Protectors and any other air units that are giving you trouble, even Vultures, um, as long as you're using them. 
Yeah, couldn't have said it better myself. Um, that is a great way to kind of counteract your weakness to the air. Um, use that glassing beam as a really offensive thing. Uh, we've also used it when the enemy has ma amassed big armies, especially like you talked about. We've got a couple of scorpions coming. The units are literally fighting over their their friendly army to get out right um and they just can't get out fast enough because there's so many units which is great uh you kind of just sit there and watch them uh watch them blow up uh which is really fun so the next unit we have is the wraith um that is actually going to be changed um when we unlock the ironclad wraith uh, and we'll go over that card uh shortly we'll go ahead and knock out the rest of the deck and then we'll go check out the card library and kind of talk about why we'd like to uh, put that one in there and why we wouldn't put a couple. Um, but when it comes down to it, um, the shield and the ability uh, to really take a lot of damage and spit a lot of damage makes even the standard Wraith a great option. Absolutely. Absolutely. Blister back. I advise every army to have some type of artillery. Um, I really like the blister back. Um, I think it's just a cooler unit than the Kodiak, mm -hmm. um, just from a straight design perspective. Uh, and it's fun to see six missiles crash into somebody from halfway across the map. I uh, just really like seeing that. But um, make sure you, you lock your blister back down into its little siege mode so it can knock its, you know, uh, toss its artillery. Set it somewhere where you can kind of get it out if you need to, but almost it's weird you kind of want it central but you don't want it in the way um but definitely use blister backs whenever possible um they really soften up armies that are coming at you before they even get to you right and we have a 3v3 tips video and i think we show i show a little bit of gameplay uh using atriox using these things because uh, he has the enduring uh one and we'll talk about that uh when we jump over to his video um but these things again as lost said locking them down in a siege mode. I will say it feels like, although it's probably the same as the Kodiak, it feels like the blister back actually picks up faster. And one other uh, difference to understand with this is the blister back, um, it becomes an air unit. So for whatever reason, they start attacking it with hunters, uh, which are going to be able to hit it in ground mode, pop that thing off the ground, get it in the air mode, and it's going to shoot. It's going to take those things out and you can lock it back down. Um, the midpoint between B and C, at least on the Proving Ground map uh, that we're playing in the beta here, um, is a great spot to put it in because you don't usually get a lot of vehicle traffic moving uh, across that. Um, so just finding those niche points uh, within the map uh, and being able to drop them in. Heck, uh, I've even placed these things in the base uh, inside the healing ring um, and the unit never dies because nobody actually sends the units <laughs> over to kill it. Um, and it has great range, so it's going to be able to do some damage for you for sure. Yeah, they're uh, they're probably my favorite unit um, on the uh, on the banished side, at least that we've seen so far. Um, the prowling marauder is a specialty of shipmaster. Um, I'm not super excited about the damage output of it, but having cloak and having it be another kind of jack of all trades type of unit is really nice. Um, I I tend to use the Marauder to go grab energy a lot. Um, I probably should work on that. Um, I, I don't necessarily want a 120 energy unit being my scout um, to just kind of run around and grab things uh, because it does have the the cloak and the ability to kind of get in and just pester people. Um, I, I think I could use that offensively a little bit better, but really good option uh, for kind of a later game uh kind of supplement to the wraith uh and and the banshees as you're kind of moving with your army um i will say it's super fun to have a prowling reaver and a prowling marauder um <laughs> kind of chilling on a base and you kind of i mean you, you at least have something that can hit solidly against any type of unit and they can't attack you back uh which is just great it's fun i think this is a great um, unit the... too if uh if you're using it to um you know, drop it in, say they're bringing a huge army push from one point to another. This is a great single unit to drop in and go grab that point. One, again, because it has the cloak, so a lot of things aren't going to be able to see it. Two, it has a lot of health, too. Uh, so even if it does get detected, uh, it can fight for the point, and it can keep that point uh, contested for you for a while. Um, and again, if it, if it stays cloaked and they don't see it, it's just going to launch those missiles, um, and it's going to take out units without people even knowing it. So uh, definitely recommend this. 
yeah the 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 supplement with those and going into the honor guard um i think are really nice because if you're able to do the reavers the marauders and the honor guard um those are pretty inexpensive um so you need to attack um certain points those are kind of inexpensive uh ways to to cover all of your bases and still be pretty pretty set defensively uh honor guard is actually the cheapest hero there is at 190 energy um deploys with a shield and a cloak um the cloak is only for 90 seconds um one that i've kind of thought well he's kind of underpowered it seems maybe he could use maybe like a longer lasting cloak um but we'll see how it goes um 90 is is definitely better than nothing um so he's a really fun unit to watch and we can actually well we can talk about starting armies really quick and then yep. uh look at the the couple units that we didn't put in i personally use the assassin starting army uh which is basically two of those cloaked marauders um i i don't particularly like the scouts um you can you can do three ghosts with shields which is nice but i don't know i just don't feel like the damage output is there and i like kind of the assassin type mentality uh with the shipmaster uh, i think that suits him really well i'll say this so again. if these, we these two units again are great at the beginning because uh, a lot of times you're not seeing uh, starting armies deploy with units that can detect these obviously you got some of the unsd side that has a nightingale um, sometimes you get some elite rangers in there that can see them there's a lot of units uh, that you'll run up to that can't even see these guys so they're going to sit lock down a point probably kill some units if you're not paying attention or people will drive the units in and be like why is this point contested and all of a sudden half their units are destroyed uh, mostly because you sent the assassin side with the cloak in uh, so uh, i think it's a decent starting uh, position but it is play style too um, if you like having three ghosts, them with shields, they do take a little bit of damage. Having three of them does make it capable to, to grab a point and kind of gra go grab energy at the same time. So kind of a toss up here for me. Yeah, and we, we kind of struggled with that. If, if you want to check out the card library, um, we can talk about the Unstable Banshee, which was kind of a source of contention with us um, in, in building this. Standard Banshee is 60 energy. And it is good against vehicles and neutral against both infantry and other air units. Unstable Banshee over double the energy. So it's 130 and it's good against air um, as well as the vehicles. So you get that extra boost and it has the blast ability where it blows up after it dies. I've used it a little bit. I have it. Don't necessarily like it. Um, if, if that is to be worth it, um, when the game goes live, they're going to have to make that thing stronger when it comes right down to it. Um, it's too much energy for not enough output. Um, I know that that kind of solves the issue with needing to attack air better, but that's not the way to do it, in my opinion. Um, I would rather shore up with more Reavers. I think the other thing um, they the could other... do, too, I, I was just say, the other thing they could do, too, would just be give it an ability. Give it some type of missile strike um, or something else, kind of like the Vulture a little bit. Um, because a lot of times you see the upgraded version for more energy. Yeah, it comes with an additional ability, probably more health, maybe a little bit better to attack something. But usually in conjunction with that, it gets, uh, gets an additional ability, uh, which we'll show here with the Ironclad Wraith. Um, so just for future, maybe that's something they could uh, do to power this up a little bit. Yeah, and, and to kind of contrast the, the change in energy, the Ironclad Wraith is 140, standard is 110, so we're looking at 30 energy difference. The Ironclad Wraith gets the guard ability to con to protect your entire army, still has the shield, also gets the Scorch Mortar ability um, to kind of leave an area still burning. So it gets an extra ability and gets the guard uh, kind of characteristic to it, all for 30 more energy. Why wouldn't you? Um, that's that's what I kind of mean when when I don't I don't see why the the unstable banshee is what it is, um, and that's kind of why we left it out. Um, so, in our opinion, those are the best uh, things available right now. That's the best build for the shipmaster. Yeah, 100. Um, percent I think this is a great breakdown. Uh, like I said, I'm still really hoping to get uh, that ironclad wraith. Uh, so I'm. I'm going to keep grinding those packs until I pick one up because I do want to use it. <laughs> I've had it used against me. It is awesome. Uh, so, again, we're on the last screen. Just, again, one quick overview of the deck. 
uh, for you guys before we head out. Uh, but yeah, if you got any other comments or you got any other suggestions for changes, maybe there's an ability that you really like uh, for the banish side that you know maybe we glossed over, um, or maybe you got a different solution for uh, maybe a slight weakness to air that this deck has. Uh, drop it down in the comments below. Besides that, hopefully you enjoyed the videos. If you are interested in checking out any of the other leaders, we'll have those videos up as well. Uh, so pop over, take a look at those. And if you're kind of new to it, uh, the beta runs through the 30th, so get in it. Uh, download it, start playing. Uh, we do have some 1v1, 2v2, and 3v3 uh, tips videos for you too with some pretty good gameplay, I think. Um, so go ahead and check those out. Sloth, any parting words? That's it, guys. Let me know what you think of my build. Um, try it out. See, like uh, like Doc said, if you've got any other ways to improve it um, or anything that we kind of missed or glossed over, please do let us know. I'd like to, uh, I'd like to hear some feedback. All right, cool, guys. I'm Doc. That's been Sloth. We're Average Gamer Guys. We'll check you guys next.